life is full of firsts. This trip to the west coast of Scotland offers some firsts for guests of Blaser Sporting. Sporting Shooters' Rebecca Green has never stalked a red deer. And Will Hetherington, editor of Shooting Gazette, has never shot a deer. Too much time shooting led vertically, not horizontally. We are in the capable hands of Neil and Stevie from West Highland Hunting on the Ardner Merkin Peninsula. Favourite part of my job? Seeing good healthy deer on the hill. It's the middle of the hind carl and there will be plenty of opportunities for the guys to get onto deer, but first they need to show their mettle on the frosty target. Accompanying Rebecca and Will are Robert Zeitz and Alexandra Bauer from Blaser. It's a Blaser busman's holiday as they'll be pulling the trigger on the R8s too. Right ladies, so the plan today, but obviously the change in the weather from yesterday, the wind's gone to the north and it's quite a bit colder. And what you'll find today is the deer will then go back into shelter slopes and from spying here we can see these hinds tucked in on the edge there and then above the sea. So what we're going to do is drop down onto the shore and then we're going to make our way around onto this first top. There's a hind and calf there on their own. We saw her last night so we'll probably try and take her today. And then depending on how they move we should be able to get on and get a second stop. This place has plenty of history and Neil not only offers fascinating deer facts but historical ones too. It's really quite interesting this spot. They reckon this is where Christianity landed on the Scottish mainland. So that green lump with the trees there, that was uh, meant to be a chamber cairn and that's where St Columba established his ministry on the mainland. And these standing stones with a the graveyard there, they certainly date way back. So this has always been quite significant. It's known as Camus na Gael, the Bay of the Pledges. You can really immerse yourself in the history if you want to. Mingary Castle has recently been rescued from falling into the sea. It is refurbished and is now open for guests. If you want to add to those memorable firsts we spoke of, then this could be the icing on the cake. We now work uh, basically as a hotel, although that is not a hotel. We always like to say that it's Mingary Castle uh, in its full splendour. Um, so we have uh, five bedrooms. Uh, they're all named by the clans that once lived in the castle. So we have McKeon, uh, which is a super king and sweet. Uh, we have McDougal and we have a family friendly suite, which is called McCain on the top floor and where you can see the Isle of Mar just in front of you. And as well, we have like a honeymoon suite, which is in our courtyard, which is called McDonald. It's not long before Neil has Rebecca and Alexandra on a hind and a calf. He wants Rebecca to shoot the hind first and Alexandra to take the youngster as soon after as possible. You can see her leg there now, look. The hind's well shot, the calf needs shot. You see the calf coming toward you? Can you see its shoulder? It's, it's gone round the top of the hill, just keep your heads down, it'll come back round to its mother. Is it coming now, you see it? On the top of the hill. Coming now. When it stops, shoot it through the shoulder. OK, shoot it. Good girl. Well done. The youngster appears and, believe us, there's a big lump of Scotland behind it that's unseen from this low angle. Now, in a woodland setting, you'll always be told, shoot the calf first and then the female, because the chances are if you shoot the calf and she runs off, it's less of a disaster than you shooting the female and the calf getting away. But in this scenario here, the calf wasn't going to go anywhere without its mother anyway. So when mummy went down, you just lay quietly, knowing full well it'll come back. Hmm. Yeah. That's the first right there, actually. Is it? Yeah. Wow. So what do you think? Dead easy? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's only dead easy with you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different situation when you've got all the, you know, the deer I've shot in the past, they've just been completely unobstructed view. Uh -huh. get, so yeah, I felt a bit nervous about not quite being able to see every part of the deer before I shot. Uh -huh. Just that long grass, you weren't going to see your legs. No. So what we'll do is we'll just lay quietly for a minute because they haven't seen a thing. And what we're going to do is we're not going to walk forward, we're going to creep back, go up that gully, stalk up to them, garlic and pull them out of sight and carry on. So if you want to make sure your rifles are safe. Neil plays the hills like a snooker table. A shot here moves the deer into the next valley. We can then reposition for the next pot shot. Hmm. 
is the farthest to the right. Okay. Good girl. Rebecca takes a cough at an acute girl. angle. Yeah. It's good work by the magazine editor and the estate rifle, a Blazer R8 yep. in 300 Win Mag. If you shoot every red deer the rest of your life like you shot that one, you'll never have any problems. Absolutely perfect. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I think for us, rugged reliability and consistent accuracy is what we're looking for. I mean, it's nice that you can take it down if you're travelling abroad, but I mean, Stevie and I and the rest of the team, they're using blazers, are using these rifles day in, day out as a working tool for anything from managing foxes to managing deer. And you just want to be able to take consistently a humane, clean shot. The next day, Will is up. This time, we know the hind we are after. What we're going to do here, if you look just over to the, the back here, Robert, you can see a group of hinds making their way off along the slope. Yeah. And above us on the right, below the top, there's an old hind we've been watching for a couple of weeks. So we're going to drop back down the wind here, come around the back of the feature, and uh, take her, and then hopefully take the follower as well. Okay. That's a good job. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll give it a go. However, Neil spots a hind that needs to go. There's a strange lump on the side of her face. Her condition is poor and so is her calves. Will shoots the hind and Robert shoots the youngster plus another small hind. When we get to her, it's a miracle she's lasted as long as she has. And the way she was moving was wrong. And then we look at it, see this back leg is completely wasted. And then this knee joint here is broken. So I mean, look at that, you see the damage to the leg there whole leg is wasted away and then if you look here you can see that's been broken and then if you look at her bottom jaw there's signs of, a, of fusing and healing to the bone in her head it's more than likely here with where we are in the glen that this lady has been hit by a car she's been smashed up quite badly by it but she's survived it and it's remarkable that she's survived and that we haven't seen her until now so we'll, we'll garlic this one out and have a look but there's a good chance that this one isn't fit to eat the other hind is good for the larder. He lays her out in a way that avoids the birds, the eagles, spoiling the carcass and for ease of preparation. If you leave him laid out like that, he's nice and easy for the eagle to get into. So what you want to do is lay him on his front, okay, open the back legs up like that. And then another thing that it does, it makes it nice and easy for setting the carcass. Put his neck out straight, uh -huh. or her neck out straight, cross it like that. Right. Okay. You cross the legs over? What you'll find is when you lay it on the back and uh, lay it on its back in the larder to clean it out, it'll be absolutely straight, okay. and it'll clean out quite easily. And the eagles aren't strong enough to flip it over. Well, I mean, if you leave it long enough, they'll they'll okay. go in through the backside, but it just makes it a bit easier. And also, when the carcass is left like that, it's draining too. You know? yeah. At the end of the trip, both Will and Rebecca take away memories of a successful stalk with a sprinkle of local history, a dollop of deer biology, all served up in an extraordinary place. If you want to add some more firsts to your life, and if you haven't become addicted already, go to westhighland-hunting.co.uk and to blaza-sporting.com.